Hello and welcome to Treasure in Every Verse. I'm your host, author and Bible teacher, Kevin Madison. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, friends, we're back and we're back in our series of uh, being born again. And we had stopped here, right here, and we was talking about born from above. So this section really had to deal with what, uh, what the Lord was saying, basically here, when he said that you had to be born water and we said it was the word and the gospel based on all the scriptures that we read previously concerning this thing and then we said it was done uh of the word and by the spirit and if you don't have those two you were locked you're locked out of heaven so essentially that's what the bible is talking about when he's talking about being born again now we were on this and i, I went here so i can give you more background on what God was talking about when he was talking about the water. All right, so let's go back and let's start looking at the water again. And, and we said right here, it started, you know, uh, through the washing of regeneration, which is this, the, the word and then the renewing of the spirit. So there you have the witness. And then we went to John 13. He said that you all obeyed. And we seen in John 14 and 15 that he was talking about the word. Uh, and then... Uh, we read here in Exodus, we walked through this and we talked about the brazen altar and how you had to be washed at the, at the, uh, the labor uh, of water. So this all has to do with how the believer live. Then we got into this right here and we were talking about John 15 where he said, Jesus speaking, you are already clean. How Jesus? By the word. God's word is water. Okay, remember. When Jesus was peers, nobody else has this, folks. Jesus was peers. What came out? Blood. And what else? Water. Blood and water came from his side. He is the living word of God. All right. Then we read in John 17 where he says, sanctify them. Cleanse them, Lord. Cleanse them. How? By your truth. What's God's truth? His word, God's word is true. So we see that I gave you six witnesses that the water isn't natural water. Folks, natural water can't do anything for you. It is of the earth and it is perishable. Nothing that is perishable can make you clean in the eyes of a holy God. All right. So then we talked about the word. It's the word of faith. That word gives you faith. Then we said, sanctify and cleanse the church. How? By the washing. Washing of what? Water. What is that? It's the word. So we see over and over and over again, when we come back to this, based on what the scriptures teach, all right, that this water, unless you are born of water, we know for a fact now, based on the scripture, that this water is the word of God. All right, then we have the spirit. So let me go back to this. I wanted to, we, was, we started on this and I wanted to show you how the Old Testament, we did it here in Exodus, right here in chapter 30. Now we're going to transition to the instructions that God gave. Now, this actually starts in chapter four, but I'm going to pick it up in chapter six. So if you want to see, you know, where it starts, now I'll go to the, to the scriptures, to the board uh, right here. And we'll, we'll, we'll just show you right quick um, how, it, how it comes up in uh, chapter six. I'm sorry, in chapter four. And then it, it goes back to... Uh, down to chapter 6 and it starts talking about all these things, right? Okay, so let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 4. And you'll see right here, he starts talking about all the offerings, folks, that, that needs to be done. And this is the sin offering. Now, watch this. Okay? Now, let me ask you a question. If a person sins against God and they had no intentions on sinning against God 
and didn't even know that they sinned against God. How does God look at that? Does he excuse them? Do God say, oh, that's okay. You didn't mean to do it. According to the scriptures, the answer to that is no. It doesn't even matter if you know. It doesn't even matter if you didn't intend and you still don't know. Look at this. Now the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. And this is to all of us, folks. Not the law, just how God reacts to sin. If a person, if a person does what? Sins. Now, unintentionally, against any commandment. He ain't talking about just the Ten Commandments, folks. Against any of the commandments of the Lord. God gave them way more commandments than ten. In anything which ought not to be done, it does any of them. Do you see that? Now, he talks about a person. Now, look at this. He transitions and he starts talking about the what? Anointed priest. Sins. Wait a minute. Priests can sin? According to the Bible, yes. Should they sin? No. But they do, folks. Bringing guilt on the people. So when leaders in the church sin, it impacts the whole congregation. Then let him, the priest, bring to the Lord for his sin, which he has sinned, a young girl without blemish and all this stuff. Now, that's what I'm trying to show you. It doesn't matter if you know or don't know. If you sin, you break God's law. God has every right to kill you on the spot. All right. Now, where I want to go with this, well, we want to go here into chapter 6. So let's go back to the slide. Now, we advance in the chapter 6, and this is all talking about the sin offering. And this is a section directly God giving instructions to the priests. Now, today, who are the priests? No, they're not pastors. Their pastors are included. But everybody who is in the church is a priest. Listen, all of Israel, every single citizen of the nation of Israel was supposed to be a priest. When did that change? That changed when Moses went up into the mountain and Aaron made the golden calf. God said, forget it. He chose one tribe and made that tribe and says, nope, these people, you want to worship idols like that instead of me? No, forget it. You're not going to be part of, part of this. Here's, a, here's another system for you. Now, with the church, everybody has changed internally. So they can, everybody can be a priest. Why? Because they are changed. They are holy, created that way. In the future, after the tribulation and in the millennium, every Jew is going to be born, born again without sin. Therefore, every single Jew during that 1,000 year transition or, or kingdom of, of Jesus Christ, kingdom of heaven on earth, every Jew is going to be born with the Spirit of God living inside of them. They're going to be born saved. And they're going to be all priests to the entire world like God intended it to be. All right, now back to this. Also, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron. Now, this is very specific. All right. Speak to Aaron and his sons. Why? Because this is the high priest office. This isn't your regular priest. Okay. This isn't just your Levites. Even though Aaron was part of the tribe of Levi, so was Moses. So when Moses was able to do things that others couldn't do, Moses was both a prophet and a priest. There were lots of prophets who were priests. Ezekiel for one, 
Okay, so that's just one, Zechariah for another. There were lots of prophets who were priests. David was a prophet and a king, but he wasn't a priest. Jesus was both prophet, or all three, prophet, king, and priest. And a prophet, king, and high priest. Okay, now, oh, by the way, side note, no high priest was ever a prophet. Aaron and to his sons, saying, this is the law of the sin offering. In the place, and this is important, folks, in the place where the burnt offering is killed. Why is that important? Let's keep reading. The sin offering shall be killed. Now, what if the priest had determined that uh, he wasn't going to do that? No, that happened. What if the priest had determined that, no, I ain't, I'm, I'm not going to. So what, what is he talking about? We just, we just read something, right? So here's the tabernacle that, that Moses, uh, God gave to Moses to erect. All right. So this altar right here is the brazen altar. So here are the slaughter tables. So these tables is where the priest would take the animals and slaughter them. And then they would pour water and that water would pour out and go down the mountain. Okay, so, so what was happening here? God says, when you come, this would be the burnt offering. Now God is saying, I want the sin offering to be done in the same place. Okay, what if the priest decide, you know what, no. I'm not going to do the sin offering there. I'm going to do the sin offering over here. Would that be acceptable to God? Of course not. Why not? Because God gave specific instructions on where he wants things done. You see, you can't just go and take God's word and do what you want with it, even though you would be offering the right offering. Even though you are in the right place. But if you do it on the wrong table, then it is not, it's, it's not acceptable to God. See, he gives very specific instructions. If you don't follow those things exactly how God says. Now, he says there's one way to get into heaven. God himself said that. You must be born again. Some people said, no, oh, no, I'll just say a prayer. What does that have to do? There's nothing in the Bible that says you must say a prayer to get to heaven. It doesn't say that. It says you got to be born again, though. And he tells you exactly how that happens. It's in the book. You don't have to guess. Now, can I pray and that will get me to heaven? No. No, because prayer can't get rid of sin. Why not? There's no blood in your prayer. Let's go back. Watch this. So we see that the burnt offering and the sin offering had to be killed in the same place, right? Why? God says that offering is most holy to the Lord. Why? Because it takes care of the sin problem. Listen, folks, your problem is not your husband, your wife, your family, the devil, the demons. Your, your, your problem is none of those things. They may be, you know, part of a temptation, part of a testing, part of a trial. But in the eyes of a holy God, they're not your problem. What's my problem, Kevin? Your problem is your own sin. That's it. 
you got to get rid of that. The question is, how do I get rid of my sin? Don't tell me about some religion. None of that mess gets rid of sin. Tell me how I get rid of my sin. There needs to be, according to the scripture, an offering. There has to be an offering. Now let me ask you a question. Is raising your hand and going walk in front of some church a sin offering? You answer that question. It's speaking words out of your mouth and asking God to do something a sin offering according to the scriptures. Is it? If the answer to that is no, then you know that's not the prescription to get to heaven. Why? Because you gotta have an offering. Now, let's keep reading. The priest who offers it, the priest offers what? The sin offering. He eats the sin offering. He becomes a partaker in that which he does. You and I as priests, not pastors, every believer is a priest. You and I as priests in preaching the gospel or partakers of Jesus Christ. We, I showed you last week, eat the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't eat my body, if you don't drink my blood, you have no part in me. Now, God isn't giving instructions for you to be a cannibal. He's talking about an offering for sin, folks. All right. And it shall be done, where? In a holy place. What shall be eaten in a holy place? The sin offering. And the sin offering should be eaten in a holy place. Now, what does that mean to me and you today? That simply means as you partake in Christ, your life ought to be holy. When you eat Christ, it should reflect because now it goes in and it comes out as a lifestyle. What goes in? Something holy. And he tells you where to do it. You and I play to an audience of one. We live our lifestyle to an audience of one. I do nothing to receive pats on my back from men. I don't care about that. What I care about when I get in front of him and he tells me, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's all that matters to me. Now, this is an important point. This is really, I want to embolden it and highlight it so that you can clearly see this because this is the most important part. The offering is extremely important. Without the offering, none of this takes place. But this is really what I want to focus on. Everyone who touches the flesh must be holy. You have to be holy before you become a partaker in this. How is that possible? The burnt offering. The burnt offering is Jesus Christ. The sin offering is for your disobedience after you are partake of the burnt offering. You're now holy. If you are not holy and you touch this sin offering, folks, nobody, after Jesus was raised from the dead, did anybody who was not holy, anybody who was not a believer, did they see him? No. Nope. Did they touch him? No. Nope. The believers did. Only those who are holy 
will ever touch the Lord. And when it's blood, you see, that's what has to be. There has to be blood sprinkled. And that blood on any garment, you shall wash that on which it was sprinkled. Why? Why do I need to clean my garment when the sin, the blood of the sin offering gets on me? Because it's a sin offering. Remember, it's your sin. We read in Leviticus 4. It's the priest's sin. You get that on you. God says, as you're traveling and it sprinkles on your garment, you have to wash that mess. How do you wash it off? Confession, friends. Confessions. You got to confess it and forsake it. He who confesses his sins and forsake his sins, Proverbs says, receive the blessings of God. If you don't forsake your sin, then it's useless confessing your sins. Folks, that's not a true confession. All right, so you put in the, get, get the sin offering done, you partake of the holiness of God, you wash by confession and forsaking in a holy place. It's always in a holy place. Are there any sinners in the holy place? Of course not. The holy place is where God resides. There's no sinners there. There are no sinners. Look, let's go back. Hey, cut it out. Okay. Only the priests were allowed in here. You had to be a priest by birth. By birth. You couldn't, you couldn't join the Le tribe of Levi. It doesn't matter if you were Jew. Somebody from the tribe of Benjamin could not be a Levite. Jesus Christ himself could not be a Levite. Why? because he came from the tribe of Judah. That's why he's a high priest after Aaron. No, he would have to have been a Levite. He's a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So only the priest, only the priest, the Levites, By birth, we're allowed to do anything in here. Guess what? Today, in the body of believers in Christ, this here, this whole thing right here, what is it? This is Christ, folks. Everything that happens in here is talking about Christ. Who operates here? Only believers. And the believers are all priests by birth. Nobody can join the church just like you couldn't join the Levi, the tribe of Levi. You had to be born into it. You have to be born into the body of believers. All right. So, but the earthen vessel in which it was boiled. Now, he's, what is he talking about? Boy, he's talking about the body, the body of sin. It has to be broken. It has to be taken away, taken out of service. And if it was boiled in a bronze pot, it shall be scarred. <laughs> oh my goodness. Rinsed in water. Now listen. Listen to me very carefully. 
there's certain things going on right here. What's happening here? This is for a sin offering. This is for a believer disobeying God. This part right here is called chastisement. That's what's happening here. The sin offering. That earthen vessel that's broken, you know what that is? We talked about it before. That's the sin unto death. That's God taking his child home because of egregious sin. God killing his own child, taking him to heaven. It's broken. No repair. When you don't sin a sin unto death, you get ch chastened by God. What happens then? It's scourged. It's the same word used in Hebrews 12. Let's go look at it. Not just Hebrews 12, in the Psalms as well, but I'm gonna show you in the New Testament so you wouldn't say, nobody can say that I'm, I'm taking everything out of the Old Testament. I'm not taking everything out of the Old Testament. I'm just showing you the, the uh, putting it all together, the old and the new, because it's basically saying the same thing. Folks, God don't change. <laughs> The way God operates, he, he's operating the same way he was operating in the Old Testament. It's just one was given a specific role to make way for the Savior. And now that the Savior have come, we are now doing the things and participating with the Savior. Preparation for the Savior, working with the Savior. Okay. Now look at this. Starting in verse 3, chapter 12, Hebrews. Now remember the word that we look for. Scourge. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. Talking about Christ. Lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Why would you become weary and discouraged? Because you are going to face hostility from sinners. God says it's going to happen. Why are we shuffling? Why? You shouldn't be. It's going to happen. That's what sinners do. You and I did it too. You have not yet resisted to bless yet, meaning they didn't kill you yet. Striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. Now he's talking to a Jewish audience. He's making a reference back to a Jewish scripture, the Old Testament. This comes out of Psalms. Look at this. My son, do not despise what? Chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. Why? Because you sin. That's what we were reading over in Leviticus chapter 6. If a priest sins, you get rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he does what? He chastens. And he does what? He scourges. Where did we see that before? If the earthen vessel in which it is born shall, uh, if the sin is egregious and you get chastened and it's, it's God determined that it's something that he want to take you home, you're broken. If, though, God determines that it's not one where he would kill you and bring you home, he does what? He scourges it. You see? Then he rinses it with what? Water. What's the water again? The word. He corrects you. Then he feeds you and rinses you with his word to get your mind back on track to obey him. 
scourged. God, he chastens. What does that look like? Scourging. Now, that scourging is different for every single person and for every single sin. Every person and every sin, it's different. Only God knows because only God knows the true intent behind what you did. And he does that for how many of us? Every single child. Everyone. If, if you endure chastening, how does God respond when you respond to God the right way? God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom the father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, if there's any believer out there that's sinning and God doesn't chasten you, of which how many? All have become partakers, then, that person who's going around claiming that they are a believer, the scripture says, no, you're not. The scripture says you are illegitimate and you're not a son. I didn't say that. That's what the book says. And I'm just repeating what it says. So I guess I am saying it. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be subjected, uh, subjection to the father of what? God is the father of my body? No, God is the father of spirits. Your body is going to die. God don't want your body, it's full of sin. He burns that stuff. It's going to be changed. God, the new birth, is for spirits. It is not for the body. And live, for they indeed, for a few days, chasing and seeing best for them. But, and, but he, God does it for your prophet and my prophet. Why? So that we can be partakers, partakers of his holiness. God is seeking holy behavior from his children. Now, when the chasing is going on, when God is doing it, it doesn't seem to be joyful. It is not. Sometimes that chastening comes, you know, in the form of sickness, in the form of job loss, in the forms of broken family. Listen, it can be really, really painful. But in the end, what happens? Present, but painful. Nevertheless, after God is finished, it yields the peaceable fruit of what? Righteousness. That's what God is after. That's what he's after. And he's going to get it, whether you want to or not. He's going to get that out of you if you're his child. To those who've been trained by it. All right. Now, we see clearly that that is what the scripture is talking about. That's what it's talking about, folks. And he scourged and is rinsed with water. All the males among the priests may eat it. It is most holy. But no sin offering from which any of the blood is brought into the tabernacle. Now, what is he talking about? There's a sin offering that is brought into the tabernacle. There's a sin offering that's brought where? That's brought back here. Right here and right here. That blood, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? He's talking about the blood of Christ. He's talking about the body, that lamb that was slain on the day of atonement.
that blood brought into the tabernacle of need to make atonement, you see, atonement in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burned in fire. Why? Because Christ is taking on your sin. See, this is sin that you commit after the believer. And you can confess that. No amount of confession can atone for your sin. Mm -mm. You need somebody to take it away. It has to be taken away. And it receives the full judgment of God. It is burned by fire. Jesus Christ took the full judgment of God for your sin and for my sin and for every believer's sin. Everybody else who dies without Jesus Christ taking their sins away, they too, their bodies, their bodies is going to be burned in the fire. Friend, this is, this is God explaining this. Either you allow Jesus to be burned in the fire for you, or you are going to be burned in a fire. The fire of God's judgment, and it's going to last forever. All right.